What is up, friends? Welcome back for another episode of Better Call Saul. We are fresh off a very surprising guest appearance in the last episode with Hector Salamanca coming back into the picture, and he's walking around to my amazement, and so I wonder if during the show we're going to learn what exactly happened to him to put him in the wheelchair that we see him in in the future, and seeing him interact with Mike there, knowing how powerful both of those guys are was a real treat, and so hopefully Hopefully we get more of that and maybe interact with some more of the Salamanca family. As I mentioned at the end of last episode, seeing all these characters brought back up makes me excited for the future and feeling like maybe they bring back a lot more characters from Breaking Bad as well. And so I'm not going to rule anything out at this point, but obviously the stuff with Jimmy is really interesting right now because I don't know exactly where his mindset is. I I think the last time we saw him was that cool shot of him just standing kind of slouched over a little bit in the bathroom but I don't know if he's going to decide to change himself and kind of conform to the rules that he doesn't necessarily agree with and that he might feel are stifling to him or if he's just going to abandon everything and just go back to his old lifestyle of doing everything on his own. I feel like whatever he chooses, it's going to not bring him happiness because he feels very internally divided right now to me, like he's trying to live two separate lifestyles and balance everything. But I'm looking forward to this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching along with me. If you do, definitely consider leaving a thumbs up. Helps the video reach a lot more people, helps the channel grow. Of course, you can check out the full length reactions on my Patreon. Link for that is in the description below. They're always uploaded few weeks before the YouTube edit so you can get them there early. Of course, you'll need your own copy of the show to watch along with me there. But without further ado, let's jump to episode six. In partnership with the law offices of Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, the law offices of Davis and Maine are working to help those who have been overcharged by their retirement communities. I oh, love that shot right there. I don't know exactly what's going through his mind right now, but that commercial seems to be haunting him even when he can't sleep. <laughs> nice. Just doing anything he can to keep himself entertained while he can't sleep. Getting quite creative. <laughs> Is the sleepiness finally starting to hit him now? Better take the opportunity while he can. Oh, never mind. He's just leaving. Maybe he's got similar case as Kim right now where he just has to keep constantly working throughout the night. <laughs> I see. So he was going there because that's where he feels comfortable enough to sleep. He's not enjoying the life of luxury that it looks like he has there. Glad we get a lot more Kim footage, it looks like, because I definitely enjoyed all of it last episode. Hopefully Chuck was being serious when he said he would talk to Howard and potentially get her old position back. Someday you'll see me floating in the sunshine. <laughs> This is great, man. I would love receiving messages like this. I like that she came back into the room, though, once she heard the ringing. Sweet and clear as can be. Valley High will whisper. <laughs> I love it, man. Seeing that smile creep back in. No way you can deny the talent in his voice right there. I'm glad that she doesn't seem to be as angry as it seemed with him. Here you go. That completes our week-long tour of South Pacific. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. What a fantastic scene right there. Doesn't answer it, but Jimmy still apparently got what he wanted, I think, by cheering her up there. Maybe I didn't realize it before, but maybe the cup not fitting in his car signifies that Jimmy doesn't necessarily fit in this lifestyle, that he's trying to force himself into a life that he's not ready for, that he doesn't like. Yes, dude! 
Oh, that's why I love to see Kim back in her old space. I'm so glad she definitely deserves to be back here. Kevin and Paige are here. Absolutely. I also just hope that Howard doesn't continuously hold a grudge against her, even if he puts her back in the old place. I don't know exactly what Chuck may have said to you, but just so you know, I did not ask him to step in on my behalf. Oh, yikes, man. He is clearly still holding a grudge, unfortunately. I love that shot, though, that we just followed him through the hallway all the way to here in one take. Great to see you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Kevin, how's your grandson? Oh, out of control. Just running circles around all of it. Oh, so great, man. Those little moments say a lot more than what a few lines of dialogue could do. That's tough, man, having to overcome some animosity between them and try and put on their happy faces. Can I help you? He needs an answer. Respectfully, I'm going to have to say no. You sure about that? I am. I mean, normally I would say Mike should know what he's gotten himself into, but I feel like it's the other way around, which is what makes those moments so cool is seeing these characters that we already know so much about interact in the past in these different circumstances. He got a welcome mat, but I don't know how many people he's exactly going to be welcoming into his house. I guess just trying to be a little bit more friendly. Assigned HIPAA release so that we can examine the records ourselves. This is a transparent attempt at intimidation. Many of our clients have information in their medical records that they prefer to keep private. As great as Jimmy is at his job, Kim is just as good. She seems to be nailing this situation too. The named plaintiffs are suffering from dementia. It seems like the defense issue. wants to have it both ways. If our clients are suffering from dementia, then the residency contracts they signed with Sandpiper couldn't have been entered into knowing. No. <laughs> oh, man. Bring the hammer down on this dude. I love it. Just trapped him in a corner. No way out of it. I ask that you deny the defense's motion, Your Honor. I'm leaning toward granting the motion, but would like to review the pleadings and briefs again. Oh, my gosh, dude. Don't tell me that he goes along with that. Maybe it isn't all smooth sailing from here on out with the case. Uh, I just wanted to say good work in there. I'm pretty sure I lost. Oh, of course you did. It's an unwinnable position. That's why your boss didn't bother showing up. But you went down swinging, and I admire that. What are you doing for lunch? What is this guy's motive right here? I don't like where this is going. It's very interesting how they can interact outside of a case like that and just treat each other with professional courtesy. I'm not used to that world, and so you definitely have to keep emotions out of it. So you've been with HHM, what, 10 years? Yeah, last August. And you started in the mailroom? I did. This guy's not gonna ask her to come work for him, is he? Because if he admires her work, he might not want her working at an opposing firm. I have no complaints about HHM. That's great. However, if on the off chance that you're pondering a change, Schweikert and Coakley would be more than happy to put your talents to good use. There it is, man. What the heck? I don't know what to think in this moment because he's been the opposition for this case and I feel like he's doing a scummy thing, but this could be the position that Kim's always wanted. We're a large, diversified firm and just think what you can do with our resources and the freedom to really spread your wings. That's... I owe a lot to HHM. Oh shoot, man. She did not look like she was expecting to hear this. She's stumbling over her words a little bit. I feel like she's thinking about it. And to be clear, I'm talking partner track. Jesus, Sean, would, would you have to send to Moscow? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the wait, Mr. Schweikert. Oh, that was a great scene though. My goodness, if Hamlin lost both Jimmy and Kim to other firms, that would just devastate him, considering that Chuck barely comes into work as it is. Oh, jeez, okay, we're getting a bit of an intense scene right here. I feel like for good reason, Mike is expecting someone to have been here. Bro, that's genius. That's why he got the welcome mat. Just proved that somebody was there. This man is too smart. Oh, 
I love that there's no music or soundtrack or anything and even all the ambient sound is pretty much silent. I also love that for a rare time in this show the camera is handheld and the jitteriness definitely adds to the tension. Oh gosh, this is so well done right now. I love that this has been one take up to this point. I feel like danger could be around any one of these corners. Hey, Mays here for the gourmet quick chop for crunchy coleslaw. Tap again and chop celery. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you freaking boss, just destroyed both of them in such a small matter of time. What's the message? Take the 5,000. It took two guys to tell me that. We were just supposed to scare you, that's all. You try harder next time. Get out. <laughs> oh, dude, I love when Mike goes into his intimidation mode. He's yeah. unmatched. Hector just learned the hard way that you do not mess with this dude. He is coming into a lot of conflict recently, though. Man, Mike tries to avoid it, but I feel like this sort of life just keeps finding its way to him. I wonder what's going to happen next, though, because surely Hector's not just going to give up. <laughs> oh, that was amazing sound editing right there. Just having the music abruptly cut as soon as he grabbed his hand. Seems like this might be taking a toll on him, though, if he's starting to get some shakes like that. Howard asked if he could go through them now. I was just about to grab some lunch. Yeah, he needs them done by 2.30 so he can draft a letter. Oh no, dude, did Kim just make up her mind right there? Howard pushed his luck way too far. I mean, if she's just destined to get disrespected constantly, I can't blame her. When are we going home? You don't like it here? It's okay. You want me to come in there and get you? I can't have you in a pool, it's only okay. It's good, it's good. <laughs> I like Grandpa Mike just as much as Intimidation Mike. Every color of his personality is good. I'm just a good family man. Oh, bro, yes, dude, what an introduction. Oh, and Mike is actually looking fearful right there, too, or maybe just pissed off. Oh, that was brilliant the way they brought their theme back in. I haven't heard that in so long. Oh, that was masterfully done. Oh, I'm so hyped that they're back. Honey, it's time to come out now. Oh, dude, that was so good. If I could have jumped out of my seat right there without losing myself in the frame, I would have. Man, Vince Gilligan and everyone else involved certainly know how to bring out the emotion in an audience. <laughs> if she watching that couple wishing that that was her in a relationship with Jimmy? Miss, the gentleman would like me to let you know that your next drink is on him. Just let me know when you're ready. Oh, jeez, dude, that's why I was showing that before. He was just kissing that other girl, now he's trying to hit on Kim. What the heck? Wasn't sure that was gonna work. So what kind of return on investment are you getting on these drinks? Not as pretty as you. Oh, man. I'm Dale, by the way. Giselle. Yo, what the heck, man? Just playing Secret Life Simulator all of a sudden? That doesn't strike me as a very Kim move right there. I didn't think she was gonna entertain conversation with him. Jimmy. Oh, it's my grandma. She's old. <laughs> I think that grandma's name is Kim right there, I would assume. How fast can you get downtown? Why? I'm at the bar at Fork, and I've got a live one on the hook. <sighs> Wait a second. No way she's calling Jimmy back to run the game. <laughs> Oh, that's what she's doing, okay. She really embracing that lifestyle, huh? I was just saying there's no rule about that, as far as I know. Rat. <laughs> Why the good mood? Did it go well today? Please tell me it went well. Yeah, it went well. 
Oh, what a great frame right there. I love how anytime either Jimmy and Kim or Jimmy and Marco are pulling moves, they've always got that two shot with the guy they're playing in the background. Remember these faces, Dale. They are going to be on the cover of Fortune magazine January. So, no, Dale's a good guy. He's not yeah, going to do anything. Boring. Oh, no, no, not really. <laughs> And they didn't miss a step either. They haven't talked really in quite a while, but Jimmy just snuck right back into it, talking smooth as he's always been. Oh, yes, dude, please more of these scenes. I'll be honest, ever since they introduced the twins into the show, it's been hard to focus on anything else. I'm just insanely hyped. Spread your arms. <laughs> oh, we're getting them all in one scene. Let's go. I'm so freaking excited. Man, this is giving me everything that I could ever want. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm loving this man. And Hector with full mobility, certainly a lot more intimidating than Hector in a wheelchair. Let's discuss my payment. That time is past. No 5,000 for you. The price is 50. How about your payment is you get to leave? $50,000, man, that is a high price. I say the word, my nephews go to a certain motel, pay a visit to your daughter-in-law. These are two immovable objects going up against each other, though. Consider your position carefully. I got my money, or neither of us walk out of here. Oh my gosh, man, this is so good. I can't believe last episode. At the end, I mentioned that this show does a great job without having a bunch of intense scenes. This episode is full of them. How you manage to live so long with a mouth like that? Hmm? 50,000. And the gun is yours. Oh, incredible, man. Bravo. These guys are undefeated. The people behind the show, I mean. Also, the actors. My goodness, what a freaking incredible scene. Mike is deep in it now, man. We really pushed it in there. That thing we did, he finds out we're both dead. What thing we did? <laughs> there you go. Mike is fully on board. What's this? 25,000. What for? I didn't hold up my end. Your problem is coming back sooner than we expected. Oh, dude, Mike is such a legend. He's got to be the ideal person for anybody to deal with because he's always so honest with his dealings, even if they're more of the criminal nature. I had a job offer. From where? Schweikart and Coakley. So what's the problem? I keep thinking of you floating in that pool. You knew what you wanted, but I got in the way. I mean, from all of this right now, it sounds like Kim is really leaning towards that other position, which could very well be the right move for her in her career. I got what I wanted. And you with the Schweikert thing, you could have everything you ever wanted. What's not to love about that? Yeah, what's not to love? Man, I'm so glad that they had a positive interaction again because they definitely can use each other. I think Kim definitely needed that pep talk from Jimmy. Hopefully the same thing won't happen to Kim that's happened to Jimmy, where she ends up taking the job and doesn't actually enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. That's one way to make it work. Just do a little renovation. Might end up being the way his position at Davis and Maine goes. Great episode. Definitely one of my favorites so far for the reason alone of them reintroducing the twins. Still, man, I got so many chills when they showed that shot of him in the distance and played that theme music that they had. I cannot wait to see more of that. I hope we get plenty more of that with Mike and all of them. I'm interested to see how it goes down, if Mike actually goes through with their plan and if it goes smoothly after all. Well, at this point, I definitely feel like I could say this show 
feels about as bingeable as Breaking Bad did because every time I finish the second episode of my two episode grouping, I am just so sad that I won't be able to watch more for a whole nother week because especially after this last episode that we watched, I am so interested in seeing where the story goes right now, not just for Mike and the Salamanca family and all the things going on with them, but also for both Jimmy and Kim, especially with what Kim may be doing with leaving Hamlin. And if she does end up doing that after all, I wonder how much more footage we're going to get of Howard and maybe of Chuck, although since Chuck is Jimmy's brother, I feel like no matter what, he's still going to be in the picture, but if no one else is working at Hamlin out of the main characters then not much more reason to have Howard in the picture but I really love the filmmaking of this show and how it feels like it's doing a lot of the same things that Breaking Bad did where there's some kind of hidden symbolism in some of the shots or some of the instances like Jimmy's cup not fitting in his car's cup holder and everything that you can just kind of have a little bit of fun with theorizing what it all might mean. I feel like I've started to pick up a little bit more in the show of that if it actually means anything at all. And out of all the episodes in the show so far, I feel like this episode may be the most intense one that we've gotten up to this point. I feel like the second episode of the show i believe when tuco brought jimmy and the other two guys out to the desert that had some pretty tense moments but it was more just kind of excitement to see tuco back in the show whereas this one had me legitimately nervous there in a few scenes but i am loving the show so much really excited to see where they go with the second half of the season hopefully you guys enjoyed watching along with me for this episode if you did definitely consider leaving a thumbs up helps the video reach a lot more people helps the channel grow look forward to seeing you all for the next episode next time and until then peace